Hey, hey, it's fall. Like, okay, well, it's been fall for a month, but it really looks like fall now because all the leaves are changing and next week I'm getting some seriously chilly weather and I'm not looking forward to that. But anywho, so we have a season change and that means where I live anyway, um, a change of wardrobe. I'm not going to be able to wear this next couple of weeks what I wore in August because I will freeze to death. Well, not technically freeze to death, but I'll be cold. So have you changed over your wardrobe? Do you need to? Do you live in a place um, that you need to change your wardrobe because the season changes so dramatically? You can't just kind of coast into the next season. It's definitely on the list for the next couple of days because I think the weather is coming in on Sunday and it's, it's Thursday and I have got to get this done. And why in the world am I even talking about weather and changing over the seasonal wardrobe? Well, let's find out. Let's just go down this rabbit hole for a minute. Let's talk about Esther. So she was an orphan and her uncle Mordecai was raising her. And then she got chosen by the king. I have a feeling that she got a new wardrobe and it was probably to die for not like anything she'd ever had before and she was chosen by the king and given a new wardrobe hmm sounds sounds kind of familiar doesn't it because we've been chosen by the king and we've been given a new wardrobe but what does it look like? Have we fully stepped into it? And and if we've been given this new wardrobe, are we wearing it all the time? Are we wearing it when we meet him? Or are we still wearing the old clothing and the stuff that's pretty much out of style and out of date because that's not the life we're living anymore? Okay, let's jump over to Naomi and Ruth. Ruth got a new life. She was given a new um, place in their culture. She was not even from their culture. Naomi was, and she followed Naomi. And then she ended up the wife of a landowner, where before Naomi had lost her husband and both of her sons, Ruth had gone with her, and they were barely getting by because they were both widows. But then Ruth gets chosen by, I'm just guessing he was pretty handsome and a landowner and had some stuff going on. And I have a feeling she probably got a new wardrobe too, to some degree. And I bet Naomi got a few new things also. I'm just speculating here. I don't have any scripture to back this up. But gosh, it's fun to think about things in this way, isn't it? Okay, okay, that's enough speculating and daydreaming. So here's the um, the other, the good stuff, the scripture stuff. Okay, so let's start with Isaiah 61.3. In the Christian standard, it says, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, festive oil instead of mourning, and splendid clothes instead of despair. And they will be called righteous trees planted by the Lord to glorify him. Okay, splendid clothes instead of despair, and a crown of beauty instead of ashes. That sounds like a pretty big fashion statement to me, which means having a relationship with God, having a relationship with Christ, being in Christ, you get a new wardrobe. So what you have taken off and what's been taken off of you is the ashes and the despair and the mourning and the sadness and the difficulty of never knowing if anything's going to work and all of these really, well, you remember what it's like before you meet Christ? It stinks, you know, and honestly, a lot of times, Things don't look right and you don't feel right in your clothing, like your physical clothing, 
because we don't have the grace and the peace that Christ gives us when we have the relationship with him. If you are changing a wardrobe over or you're not, we are having a a season change. So are you buying anything new? Are you adding any pieces to your collection of clothing? Okay, I can't help it. I love fall. I like getting the boots out and the sweaters. And what I really like is being able to wear a sweater and jeans and the boots, not really having to bundle up in a coat. Coats are great. I like them. But man, when you can just do a sweater and maybe a scarf, that is the best, I think, anyway. And fall is probably my favorite season of all four. It's more than likely my absolute favorite season. And because we're talking about fashion and changing over the wardrobe, there are some very interesting fashion statements in scripture. And I'm not sure, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but have you looked at the fashion in scripture? Have you checked out the appropriate clothing to wear? Then there's Ecclesiastes 9, 8. Um, So basically this one says, NIV says, always be clothed in white and always anoint your head with oil, which throws right back to Isaiah or forward to Isaiah or however you want to look at this. It goes to Isaiah and we're back to being clothed and anointing your head with oil. But in the message, this is my favorite one. It says, dress festively every morning. Don't skimp on colors and scarves. Okay, I'm all about that because I like color. I like scarves and I like to dress festively. Because when we think about it, this is a party in many ways. Life in Christ is a party. Now, sometimes it doesn't always feel that way, but we know that feelings are not always, rarely, reality of what's going on. They're they're feelings, and we process them, and we think about them, and we work through them, and we decide if, if the feeling is a true feeling or maybe something that's been nudged by the enemy. But the point is, dress festively. Dress like you're going to a party. Dress like you enjoy your life because this is life. This is amazing. It's fabulous. Uh, Has it always been this way for me? Nope, not even. And I will be completely honest and say, even as a believer, it has been stinking hard. But what I have come to find out, come to realize, there's a phrase in there somewhere. If I dress more of the way I want to approach my day, most of the time, my perspective, my attitude, my outlook will change to the way I'm dressing. I know that's crazy, but it's one of those brain things. I won't get into it. But I know you've heard dress for the miracle. Maybe you haven't heard dress for the miracle or dress for the appointment or dress for the position. That's what we're talking about. You get to dress festively because we've been given the mind of Christ. We've been given life in Christ. So why would we not dress like we're going to a party? Now, I don't mean uh, wearing a formal or any of that stuff. I mean, you totally can. I've done a whole other video on that, which I guess I can link to somewhere in here. But dress because life is a party. One way or another, it's a party. And the party that's coming is even bigger. So we might as well practice dressing festively now with lots of colors and lots of scarves. Because, I mean, hey, if we're going to a party in the kingdom, then let's just practice. Okay, you know we couldn't talk about dressing and fashion and what we're wearing without going to Ephesians 6.11, which is the armor of God. The NIV says... Put on the full armor of God so that you can take up your stand against the devil's schemes. The message says, So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, 
and put them to use so you'll be able to stand up to everything the devil throws at you. Well, yes, absolutely, definitely put on the armor of God. And when we look at the armor of God, the armor of God is the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of sword of the spirit. Well, I like to joke and say uh, the helmet of salvation is actually my tiara. Because, I mean, we just talked about in Isaiah where we're giving a, given a crown. So I kind of think I need a tiara. Okay, I'm being totally silly here. But a helmet's going to mess up my hair. Because you know I have this spiky crazy hair. But my point is, we have this opportunity to dress for the battle. But we can dress very stylishly for the bot- battle. And part of that stylish dressing part of that fashion is a garment of praise that is a huge weapon and the garment of praise let me tell you it is one gorgeous outfit we're back in isaiah 61 3 for the garment of praise the garment of praise is salvation it is our absolute joyful excitement at salvation that we have been chosen by the king and we've responded to the king and he's given us a new wardrobe and this garment that we're putting on the garment of praise when i was saying that oh if you know if you dress festively every morning then it it can help you be happier in a better mood change your attitude all of these things well this is kind of what we're talking about here because God chose the word garment for a specific reason, I think. It's a physical item of clothing, but it represents or can represent a person's inner attitude. So what we're doing is we're taking off the old clothes, the old rags, the old fashion that we were wearing that was a fashion of disappointment and sadness and sin and in being apart from God, not having conversation with him, not having relationship with him. We're taking those clothes off, the old gross shirt, the pants that are not fitting well and holes in them. And I don't mean the cute skinnies with the distress look. I'm talking like the really bad, you don't want to wear these things. The old hat that is, you know, not even cool vintage, but just disgusting. God takes all of those from us and he gives us these new cute adorable clothes and I'm saying those words in our language in our culture because I I think that's how we can relate to a garment of praise you know if you put on something that you feel good in you are feeling good all day you're happy and that is hopefully what comes from inside, not necessarily of what you put on, but it's that your attitude, that your heart has changed, that God is showing you this is the outward appearance of a heart that's changed because I'm the king and I chose you and I'm giving you a new wardrobe. Okay, I probably have added enough silly in here <laughs> to make this a an almost devotional with a, a side of a lot of fun but fashion is fun and I think we should enjoy it because everything good God has given us and that includes fashion and amazing food and fun things to do and decorating our homes these were not accidental these are the things that he gave us that we get to stand in him and go God has given me the ability to make some cute things, to make my home look nice, to make amazing food. And all of those things are worship. And I can worship because I'm wearing the garment of praise. So as you're maybe switching over your warmer fall clothing to your cooler fall clothing, think about when you're trading out your clothes, are any of those clothes old? Are they the ones that you don't need? Are they ones that don't fit anymore? 
Do you need to rework some of them? Maybe hem something, maybe mend something or take some shoes out that just are destroyed. Well, that's kind of like we have the garment of praise. We have this uh, amazing outfit we get to put on. And sometimes we slide back into some of those old habits and behaviors like the old yucky t-shirt and the old yucky jogging pants that maybe we need to give them a rest and let them go find something to replace some of those some of those thoughts and attitudes that are not the truth that God's going oh girl we need to talk about this because this is so last season this is not my new creation this is last season stuff so let's move on and let's talk about a new attitude and some new cute clothes so as silly as this has been um maybe you got something out of it maybe there was something fun in here that that you know pinged some thoughts so go change over your wardrobe if you need to remember that you got cute clothes and you were chosen by the king and he's given you an entirely new wardrobe